first step in the procedure is to select an approximate value of the tension reinforcement ratio, rho. The ratio should be less than or equal to rho sub t, but greater than or equal to the minimum reinforcement ratio prescribed in section 10.5.1. Prudent choice of the reinforcement ratio can also minimize deflection problems. Flexural members will usually be of sufficient size so that deflections will be within acceptable limits when the tension reinforcement ratio does not exceed approximately one half of the maximum value permitted based on a net tensile strain of 0.004. A good starting point, therefore, is to take rho equal to one half rho max. In step two, the required BD squared for the factored bending moment, M sub U, is computed based on the reinforcement ratio that was assumed in step one. The quantity BD squared can be determined from the strength equation using the nominal strength coefficient, R sub N. This assumes a tension controlled section with phi equal to 0 0.9. A note on determining beam dimensions from this equation is in order. Typically, beams will be part of a continuous floor and or roof system. When determining the required section dimensions, the largest factored bending moment along the spans should be used in this equation. The beam dimensions determined from this maximum bending moment should then be used for all spans, which will result in economical form work. The amount of flexural reinforcement can be varied along the span lengths based on the factored moments at these locations. This is the most economical way to design such members. The beam sizing equation can be simplified by making some assumptions for the material properties of the concrete and reinforcing steel. This table summarizes the nominal strength coefficient, R sub n, as a function of the concrete compressive strength using 50% of the maximum reinforcement ratio and grade 60 reinforcement. Also given in the table, is the quantity 12,000 times the factored moment, m sub u, divided by the design strength coefficient, phi r sub n. The 12,000 factor converts the units from foot kips to inch pounds. The quantity in the far right column of this table is the right hand side of the equation that determines the required beam dimensions. Thus, for the given concrete strengths, the required BD squared can be determined by multiplying the maximum factored bending moment by the appropriate factor shown in the table, where m sub u has the units of foot kips. Other constants can easily be determined for other material strengths. Note that for one-way slabs, which are usually designed by using one foot wide design strips, this sizing equation can be simplified even further by dividing the constants in the second column of the table by 12. This results in an equation for the effective depth, D, of the slab. The third step in the procedure is to size the member so that the provided BD squared is greater than or equal to the required BD squared determined in step two. It is clear that there are an infinite number of solutions for B and D based on the equation presented in step two. In certain instances, architectural or other limits may restrict B or D to certain values. This narrows down the choices considerably. Without such restrictions, it is important to consider the deflection requirements of section 9.5. According to section 9.5.1, reinforced concrete members subjected to flexure must be designed to have adequate stiffness to limit deflections or other deformations that adversely affect strength or serviceability of a structure. These provisions are concerned with deflections or deformations that occur at service load levels. Two methods are given in section 9.5 for controlling deflections. The first is to use table 9.5a. For non-prestressed beams and one-way slabs, the minimum overall thickness required by table 9.5a satisfies the code requirements for members not supporting or attached to partitions or other constructions likely to be damaged by large deflections. The quantity L is the span length of the beam or one-way slab in inches. The span length is defined in section 8.7. Note that the values given in the table are for members with normal weight concrete with a density of 145 pounds per cubic foot 
and grade 60 reinforcement. Footnotes to the table in the code provide modification factors that are to be used for other conditions. It is important once again to consider economical form work when choosing a member thickness from table 9.5a. Let's consider the usual case of continuous construction and let's focus on beams knowing that the following discussion applies equally well to one-way slabs. According to table 9.5a it is permitted to use one minimum thickness for the interior spans and a different minimum thickness for the end spans. Using more than one depth along the same line of beams is not economical. Thus, the minimum depth should be determined based on the column one end continuous, since this thickness will satisfy the deflection criteria for all spans. Deflections need not be computed when a thickness equal to at least the minimum is provided. The second method of controlling deflections applies to non-pre-stressed members that do not meet the minimum thickness requirements of Table 9.5a or that support or are attached to partitions or other construction likely to be damaged by large deflection. For these members, deflections must be calculated by the provisions given in the code. These procedures will be covered later in this module. Deflections computed according to the second method must be less than or equal to the limiting values given in Table 9.5b. Once the minimum thickness of the beam or one-way slab has been computed, the corresponding effective depth, d, can be determined from the following approximate equations. For beams with one layer of reinforcement, d can be taken equal to the thickness, h, minus 2.5 inches. For one-way slabs, D can be taken as H minus 1.5 inches. This table can be used to determine the required width of beams for various concrete compressive strengths. It is important to reiterate that D has been determined considering deflection requirements. Thus, providing a beam width equal to at least the value from this equation will satisfy both strength and deflection requirements of the code. A few general guidelines on how to choose beam and slab dimensions are shown here. Following these guidelines can usually result in considerable cost savings. More information on economical form work will be covered later in this module. Once the values of B and D have been established, a revised reinforcement ratio, rho, needs to be computed. This is done in step four of the design procedure. A number of different methods are available to do this. Using this equation will give an exact value of rho, where R sub n is determined using B and D from step 3. In lieu of the exact method, an approximate method can be used to determine the revised value of rho. The revised rho is determined by multiplying the original rho times the ratio of the revised and original values of R sub n. Recall from our earlier discussion that the relationship between R sub n and rho is approximately linear, up to about two-thirds of the maximum reinforcement ratio. Thus, in most cases, a revised rho can be accurately determined by proportion. In step 5, the required area of steel is computed by multiplying the revised reinforcement ratio, rho, determined in step 4, by the beam dimensions, b and d. Similar to the sizing equation, a more simplified approach can be used to determine the required area of reinforcement. A simplified procedure to determine A sub S starts by examining the equation for the nominal flexural strength. As was seen in the previous graph, these variables are approximately constant up to two-thirds of the maximum reinforcement ratio. Therefore, the strength equation can be rewritten in terms of this constant, which depends on the compressive strength of the concrete and the yield stress of the reinforcing steel. This equation, in turn, can then be solved for the required area of steel, A sub S. All that remains is to determine the constant, which can be done for different material strengths, assuming that rho is equal to two-thirds of the maximum reinforcement ratio. This table can be used to determine the required area of reinforcing steel as a function of the concrete compressive strength. 
it is applicable to sections with grade 60 reinforcing steel. The equations for A sub S were developed by calculating the applicable constant that was derived earlier, and then dividing by 12,000 to convert kip foot to inch pounds. It is clear that for concrete compressive strengths that are commonly used in beams and slabs, the required area of steel can be determined by dividing the factored moment by the quantity 4D in all cases.